Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. I'm Ike in Science That, and I'd like to thank Phuket Word for uh, the shout out. His channel it recently featured me, and uh, let's see, he's got 12,000 subscribers, so much more popular than my little channel. Uh, and so every little bit helps, I guess, right? Thanks, I guess. Uh, on the other hand, um, Phuket Word did take the opportunity to call me a liar, um, and I guess I don't really like that. So as I come around to my response, uh, I think I'd like to start with that. If you already know my channel, then you probably know that it's a, that's a focus of mine. It's a sticking point. The philosophy behind what does it mean to be a liar? Um, I think we can all agree that it starts by telling something that's not true, speaking facts that are not true. We, we all agree that, that that's part of it. But usually, I, I think we acknowledge that uh, there's a possibility that somebody might make a mistake. Uh, and that's not a lie, that's just a mistake. Um, and we treat that differently, we think of it differently. So let me ask you, when you think about what it means to lie, is that different from just making a mistake? If somebody shares information that they think is correct, but it's actually wrong, are they lying or are they mistaken? And what's the difference? For me, the difference between a lie and a mistake comes in when the correction is offered. When you encounter the alternate information and you're willing to reevaluate and look carefully and say, oh, uh, I was wrong, that was a mistake. Well, that, that's different from lying. So what are we supposed to think about somebody who encounters this alternative viewpoint and is unwilling to make the correction? Are they then now lying? And ultimately, if there are two opposing viewpoints and neither side is willing to concede that the other is correct, does that necessitate that someone or the other is lying? Is it possible for two people to both be aware of the same underlying evidence and come to different conclusions without lying? Ultimately, do we carve out a separate moral judgment for somebody who believes something that isn't true as opposed to somebody who knows that it isn't true and says it anyway. So I think we have like three genuine categories here of people who uh, say something that is not true and know it is not true and they're doing this on purpose and that's definitely a liar. And on the other extreme, we have somebody who says something that isn't true, but they think it is true because they just don't know any better. And that's just a mistake from ignorance. And then there's another category, a special category, for somebody who's, who believes something that isn't true, and they say it, and even when they are corrected and, and presented with clear evidence that they have made a mistake, they still refuse to change their opinion on the matter. How do we feel individually about somebody who behaves that way? And how do we judge them? As we think about what it means to lie, let me ask you this. Is it possible for someone to lie to themselves? And what exactly does that mean? So with that in mind, let's walk back through Phuket Words video and make our own independent judgments. I'm not gonna have any answers for you. I will just present everything as, as openly as I can and let you all make your own choices. The first of my images that Phuket Word criticizes is this one. Uh, this is a picture from St. Louis, the top of the arch. The main criticism is that my image is somewhat hazy and blurry, and let's be honest, it's not going to win any awards. But Phuket Word acknowledges that this zero line right here, this line through the center of the frame, is eye level. And I would agree that if that was the case, uh, this center point here and this horizontal line is what we would call eye level. But Phuket Word insists that we can't really tell because it's too hazy. 
that it's very blurry. It's totally out of focus. Uh, it seems to be quite a hazy, cloudy day. He has gone out and found for us an alternative image from Kevin Ames. So link down in the description uh, of where this website is and where we got this image. Well, and it tells us that we are about the same height as the top of this building here. So this image is nice and clear, but there's no eye level indicator on this image. Whereas my image is kind of hazy, but it does have an eye level indicator. I wonder, is there any way we can use this image to find where eye level is and then compare it back to the other image to see where the horizon is. Hopefully you can see, I'm gonna draw in here what I think is the horizon. I think that's the horizon right there. But you know what, it's a little blurry. So maybe the horizon is somewhere up higher than that. That's the building right there, same building. My image is too big, so I'm gonna try and shrink it down. That's pretty good, let's get in there. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay, let's do the blink test now. So notice where I've marked my horizon and notice where the actual horizon is. I'm gonna let you be the judge. Uh, where is the horizon? I think the horizon is obviously below eye level. Uh, you can see very clearly from these two images by combining them. Now I wonder, why didn't Phuket Word think to try doing that? Why didn't he zoom in and look and maybe compare to see that the horizon is below the peak of one of the buildings that he called out and that the peak of that building is below eye level? Maybe he just didn't think of it. Maybe his uh, photo editing skills aren't as awesome as mine clearly are. You, as the viewer, have to make your own judgment about that. The next image Phuket Word chooses to criticize is this one, um, where he mentions that the camera is two degrees below horizontal. It, it's not, it's 0 0.2 degrees. Uh, let me draw your attention right there. That's a decimal point, so this is two tenths of a degree. And, and frankly, if it were looking two degrees downward, that would mean that the horizon was way lower, right? Um, so again, honesty is important. Here I am telling you the facts and correcting the mistakes. You judge the honesty uh, and truthfulness of the, of the presenters according to your own metrics. I'm doing the best that I can. So Phuket Word points out that the horizon isn't quite visible, it's hidden below the clouds. What we're looking at here at um, 36,000 feet is uh, uh, an eye level that is above the clouds or the, a, a cloud base here. And so those clouds are covering up any horizon on the earth. The clouds are below eye level and the horizon is below the clouds. Therefore, the horizon must be below eye level. Phuket Word even says the clouds are below the eye level. An eye level that is above the clouds. And that the horizon is somewhere beneath the clouds. Those clouds are covering up any horizon on the earth. Doesn't that mean that the horizon must be below eye level? I don't understand how there's any question about that. Phuket Word's next criticism was about this image where I've used a water level to show where eye level is, and we're showing that the horizon is below that point. His criticism is that the eye level indicated here by the water level surface is not in the center of the frame. Doesn't eye level have to be in the center of the frame? And when he said that, I thought to myself, yeah, doesn't it? Um, I mean, how did I take that picture? I took that picture, so I know that it's real. How did I do it without lining that in the center of the frame? It can be a little bit difficult to understand, honestly. So here's, here's how I took the picture. 
I set my water level and then I lined my phone up until those two water lines are exactly at the same point. That tells me that the camera sensor and those two water lines are all in a straight line. And from there, if you move up a little bit too high to where your camera is above eye level, you're looking down at the tops of those water lines and they don't line up. Or if you're too low, you're looking up at the bottoms of those waters and they don't line up. The only way to get them to line up is if the camera is right in the exact same line as the water levels. So why isn't it centered? Well, even while the camera is held in place, you can tilt the camera without moving the camera out of eye level. If you find that confusing, let me invite you to simply take a picture of your shoes and then tell me, are your shoes at eye level? Of course not. So eye level is not indicated by the center of the frame. In this image, eye level is the center of the frame because that's what's indicated by this horizontal line showing zero degrees of tilt. So if we're at zero degrees of tilt, then that line is eye level, right down the center of the frame. But in this picture, we're not using any tilt indicator. Our eye level indicator is when these two water levels line up. So I've given this some thought. What I think is that if you don't trust me, then you're not going to take my word for that. Up there, I'll put a link to a video from Critical Think, who's done more of an analysis and tries to explain this with diagrams and such. I don't need to do that. I don't think I need any diagrams because either you find me trustworthy and you're ready to believe that, or you don't find me trustworthy and the diagrams aren't gonna change that. What I suggest instead is you just go to the kitchen and grab a glass of water and move your eyes up and down until you're lined up exactly with the level of the water and ask yourself, is it possible to hold the water above eye level and still sight along the, the level of the water plane? Is it possible to be below eye level? Or if you see edge on, if you see the water plane edge on, are you in fact at the same level as the water? Just try it for yourself. Grab your cell phone and do this demonstration with your cell phone. Take a glass of water, set it on the table. Take your camera and line it up until you're looking edge on right through the water. Now that you've got that, now that you're edge on with the water, just tilt the camera up and down and tell me what do you see? If you try that simple demonstration, I'm confident that you'll understand how I took this photo and what it means. Phuket Word insists I've done it incorrectly and he describes the correct way of doing this. But I can't help but notice he doesn't show himself doing it. He doesn't show any photos that he's taken. I've gone out and taken these photos myself. There's no way anyone can trick me about these photos. If you don't believe they're real, that's okay. Just go out and take them yourself. It's very easy. So if you don't find me trustworthy, if you think maybe I'm being deceitful or lying, I invite you to reproduce this experiment for yourself. So let me once more encourage you to get up from behind your keyboard, go out into the world and make some observations on your own and find out for sure who is telling you the true information and who is misleading you. In Phuket Word's criticism video, he stops here. But I did find it more than a little curious that he didn't show the last image I included in my video. I had saved it for last because, in my opinion, this is the very best one. This is the eye level in the center of the frame and it is at zero degrees tilt on the camera. And what is this a picture of? Well, there's a horizon down here. The horizon's a little hazy, a little hard to see, but what's that right there? That's the sun. The sun is below eye level, but above the horizon. So you can argue about haze if you want, 
and maybe the horizon is too hazy to make out, but the sun is bright and clear and it is completely below eye level. So doesn't that mean that no matter what haze or clouds there might be, the horizon must be below the sun and therefore below eye level. I don't see any way out of that. And um, I wonder, is that why Phuket Word chose not to share this image and critique it? In the end, I am not qualified to tell you whether someone is a liar or maybe they're delusional. Uh, what I can do is go out for myself, out from behind the keyboard, and investigate actual evidence on my own. And you can do that too. And using that, you can find out who has been giving you valid information, who has been steering you right, and who has been steering you wrong. And if after doing that, you come back and discover that I have been saying, saying something that is incorrect, I invite that correction. I invite you to show me where is my mistake, how am I looking at this image, and somehow coming to the conclusion incorrectly that the horizon must be down here. Where is my mistake? If you could find that for me, I'm willing to listen to that. This is my analysis given to you as openly and honestly as I can. If that bothers you, I think maybe you should reflect on that for a moment. Why does this photo bother you? Isn't it okay if the horizon is below eye level? It looks like it is. Hopefully you can at least understand why I think it is. This doesn't have to be something that we get into name calling over.